Yeah, this is something a little different. The Xperia Pro is already back in the mail, flying back home to Sony, but spending a couple weeks with it, I definitely have some thoughts. Now, before I jump in, I want to hear from you. Is the word pro so watered down for consumer electronics that we can't save it? Comments down under the video. Go. The timing is kind of weird. I mean, that's fair, right? 2020 interrupted the normal flow of releases, even from the largest brands. So it shouldn't be too surprising that a pet project from Sony would be delayed even more than a mainstream phone might have been. But digging into it, I need people to remember a very important idea. Tech can exist that is not made specifically for you. But if we don't judge it fairly for what it is, then the people who do want or need something like this they might miss it. A tiny niche audience deserves the same quality and consistency of review as the person who might enjoy a video on the top selling mainstream phone of the year. And come on, if you're a real tech geek, you'll want to talk about what's out there, even if it's not the phone in your pocket. So let's chat. The Xperia Pro is wild. I'm honestly shocked it made it to market. Even this late, literally only Sony would tackle a project this ambitious. It's a niche of a niche, and delivered with the same Sony bravado I've come to love over the last couple years. The Pro reinforces the idea that the Xperia team is working very closely with the Sony camera division, and when Sony camera engineers say something is for pros, they mean the f Pro. I don't do the spec reading. I figure you can look that up all on your own. The Xperia Pro has all the specs. We good? Great. Because immediately we need to talk about who this phone is for. This phone is built to be incorporated into a content creator or broadcast workflow. Now we say stuff like that a lot. What phone is best for content creators. And then we jump through hoops to try and make the companies with the largest advertising budgets the winner. The main trick here is something I've never seen on a phone before, HDMI input. We can send video out from a phone pretty easily. I do it a lot on this channel. Using your phone screen for another gadget is something different. And feeding another camera into a mobile live stream is huge. Yes, a lot of cameras can use the Wi-Fi, but that's not always a great solution. It's prone to interference in busy areas, and you can have issues with a data connection when Wi-Fi is used to control a camera. If you want the best quality and stability, you still gotta go with a cable. It's true for audio, true for broadband, and true for video. The HDMI is a little more than just a passive monitor though. The video input can be routed and used like one of the built-in cameras on the phone, enabling this Xperia to be a 5G brain for your nicer camera. Fire up some streaming software like Streamlabs or StreamYard, point the camera input to the HDMI feed and your image quality out in the field just got a significant shot in the arm. This is where the Pro gets more interesting. This phone becomes a modular way to upgrade a cinema or broadcast camera, making it a more mobile solution. And this is where Pro means something special. I've been working in and out of news beats for over a decade. Right now, there's a little local news affiliate that is likely getting remotes done on an iPhone because it's too expensive to upgrade broadcast cameras or employ a team of people to cover a local event. As part of a camera package, the Pro could be the brain and modem for mobile workflow using existing camera hardware. This is a big step above that dismissive idea, like maybe a vlogger could use something like this. We can use one premium gadget to replace a handful of other accessories. And let's say you're a pro photographer. I don't think the separate monitor and broadcasting tools will be huge hooks for you, but having a USB 3 connection hooked up to a 5G radio means you have crazy fast photo backups. Quick tangent, consumers think airdrop file transfers are nifty, and they are kinda handy when you need to shoot over 
a JPEG over to your pal. But how about an afternoon session of raw files? You gonna fiddle around waiting for Wi-Fi transfer? You just gonna twiddle your thumbs while you wait for a USB 2 transfer speed? See, that's why consumers probably dig AirDrop. iPhones with lightning connectors? <laughs> that's still a USB 2 connection. I don't think USB 2 is very pro. Hooking up my iPhone SE to the A7S III, well, first of all, it just doesn't work on its own. You need a companion app for the phone to talk to the camera because Apple. Even then, the lightning connector can't talk to the camera unless you plug in an additional power cable. Not only is it USB 2, it's also not properly powered. It's so backwards and regressive. And I can hear sycophants already regurgitating some other influencer's opinion. Squawk. Why would anyone want to do this from a phone? Squawk. And that's how well Apple PR has programmed the tech enthusiast sector. Apple gets to charge more, deliver less, and then because they're popular, it creates a self-reinforcing cycle of logical fallacy. Lots of people like Apple, so Apple's way of doing things must be correct. Yeah, not so much. If you buy that really expensive iPhone Pro, you'll probably still need another computer to do stuff like this well. But if you buy an Xperia Pro, it handles this kind of stuff out in the field all by itself, and you don't need to break out a laptop. The camera can use the data connection of the phone to launch an FTP file transfer. I can upload directly to my NOS really easily, or even just backing up locally to the phone is so much faster. And if your response to something like this is a dismissive, but how many people like really need that? Obviously not many, but those professionals really would benefit from these capabilities. And that's the point. That's why we call something pro. It makes me kind of sad that right now someone is rocking a $1,300 iPhone thinking that it's the best a phone can get for creative types. When in actuality, iPhones are not the best options for handling files, using accessories, and being a decent companion computer. But I digress. This part of the rant over, let's get back to the Xperia. I do want to talk about the build, not in a gimmicky, well, it felt really nice in the hand kind of way, but that it's refreshing to see a pro device built to a more rugged spec and port covers, which are all toolless to open. That seems silly to say, but even with 500 gigabytes of storage built in, a professional might need to access a memory card quickly and fiddling with some pin tool is not it. It's not it at all. But average consumers never use memory cards. Okay, so if you're Samsung, then you just get rid of a terrifically useful feature. Cool. Considering the target demo though, and I would anticipate rough use, I think a screen protector is basically mandatory on a product like this. The casing is also designed around signal reception with a crazy array of internal antennas, a quad reception implementation to help with any orientation the phone might be in, and some specialty tools on board to measure signal strength. So the Xperia will report signal strength, connection, direction, and orientation, and properly inform the user just exactly what network they're connected to, because pros will care about that. It is kind of fun that Sony is leveraging picture-in-picture picture for the 5G monitor. I really used that while I was hiking around Venice Beach looking for millimeter wave. It is the best use of picture-in-picture picture I've found outside of Google Maps. Lastly, in praising what Sony is doing here, Xperia's are easily a generation ahead in power management. Working out in the field, I can assign HS power control to activate when streaming on Streamlabs, then hook the Xperia up to an external battery. And this takes load off of the phone battery and reduces some of the internal heat generated by the rest of the phone. Not only maximizing performance by minimizing throttling, but also saving wear and tear on the internal battery. This is a huge feature on the current premium Xperia's right now, and one I expect pros would appreciate, especially when paired with the new endurance mode, which takes this power management even a step further, limiting other areas of the phone to max out performance on a singular or specific task. <laughs> I don't We're want doing this in it the live. video. 
I don't want this in the video. I do not want this in the video. <laughs> oh, this is going in my video now. This, this, is, this is all in my main Sony camera video as we speak. Uh, live streaming on an A7S III. The so, trick you told me about was really good to keep something yeah. running in the background. And yeah. that, you were right. If there was nothing running, it for some reason drops it down out of you off a millimeter yeah, away. It, it, it tries to dump it's you. trying to be battery saving. I'm like, I don't battery saving. Drain the battery. Give me the signal. <laughs> Real quick, TK, we should break this down. I mean, I, yeah. I'm, I'm actually doing this on Verizon LTE in, on my back porch because I live out in the burbs now. And there's no way we're getting millimeter wave anytime soon. But but this is a setup, and I'm sure yours is probably fairly similar. I've got a, we're, an A7S we're exactly. III. Mm -hmm. I've got an Xperia Pro connected to it over HDMI. Mm -hmm. And then yep. I'm also, I'm running a cabled headset. You're using Bluetooth, right? So yes, I want it to be a little bit different. I realized that you did the cable sure. headset based last time. So uh, what I'm using is I'm using um, the just a standard pair of Bluetooth, well, not standard, the, the Liberty Air 2 Pros from Soundcore, uh, which right. I found to be actually very good from oh, our I'm, Saturday. I'm a big That's, fan. Yeah. 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 Soundcore for the win. Um, and I have it obviously connected to the Xperia Pro, and that's where the audio is being fed. So I love but, that that setup. But but I, I really want I really want to highlight that it's camera, mm -hmm. cell phone, yep. broadcast, and exactly. that that's that's the live streaming solution that we're both using. At and this and point I right can now. take you and we can go for a walk. That's literally right. the the expression I want you to understand. The setup that we're talking about right now, with the exception of it being slightly heavier than my normal setup, because I tried <laughs> holding it, I was like trying to do a Casey experience, right? When my no. wife was trying to do help me with the with the footage, no. and my arm was tired. Yeah, this is heavy. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, little example. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Sony is hitting it out of the park. I hope really 2021 with this note, with this start of a year, uh, with this device, just keeps going. I want them mm -hmm. to keep going. Um, and, and I would love to be able to, like I said, spend some more time with it. So we'll see. We'll see how the Dang. future is. Um, and uh, yeah. <laughs> Al, I'm really glowing in this video, but we shouldn't overlook the timing of this release. And it is. It's the toughest aspect of Sony's project here. New phones are already coming out with new processors. The main argument made for the pro's existence and looking at the people who I feel would most genuinely be interested in the pro, I'm not worried about onboard camera tech or processing power. It's always nice to have the latest and greatest SOC, but a Snapdragon 855 is still overkill for a lot of local processing needs. There really isn't much software that's gonna make an 865 blink in 2021. If it's used for a streaming or broadcast solution, the HDMI and millimeter wave 5G matters more than having the absolute fastest local processing. And if we're worried about the camera tech, the cameras on board are from the Xperia 1 Mark II and they're still stellar performers. Samsung is still sticking with a similar main sensor for the main shooter on the S21 and Apple has only just caught up to this sensor size on their absolute most expensive top phone option. Sony PR seems really intent on positioning this for professional use. They aren't really setting their sights on average consumers. Plus, I just think it's cute that when they talk about gaming, the main bullet point on Sony's marketing one sheet is PlayStation Remote Play. Like, it's cool we're seeing decent jumps in GPU performance, but that doesn't matter as much if you're streaming a game to your phone. So I can't do that tech reviewer thing. I can't play that game. Won't someone please think of the average consumers who are spending well over a thousand dollars on a phone? Nah. No, I'm good. I want products that live up to their pro labels. When I shop a camera, I'm not looking to spend premium cash on the best green box full auto mode. When I shop a studio grade microphone, I'm not that concerned about how well it might work for a novice Twitch streamer in an untreated noisy bedroom with their air-cooled PC case right next to them on the desk. I'm so tired of boiling everything down to the lowest consumer use possible. Sony is making a far bolder claim with this pro label. And hilariously, it might even be a bit too much fun for me as a solo producer. But when Sony talks up ecosystem, 
they hit really hard when it comes to imaging. The more I played with it, the more I would have loved to have some kit like the Xperia Pro as part of a camera and audio package when I was working at Pocket Now. It really makes sense in my brain after doing a little work with local news stations or even outfitting high school and college journalists with something like this to teach about how to produce remotes and how to work out in the field. It feels so hack to make my wacky YouTube thumbnail face looking at the high price tag and then say something like, there's nothing else quite like it. But legit, let's say you owned a nice thousand dollar-ish phone and you wanted a 5G link for remote work on a camera, and you also wanted an external mounted display for that camera. It would be pretty easy to hit or surpass this price tier depending on the accessories you choose. It just makes sense to me that there are several pockets of consumers, but mostly businesses, where this makes a lot of sense to combine a handful of accessories and have a pocket computer that can cover your phone needs too. We should celebrate that focus on truly professional grade gear. I love this. I want more. As always, thanks so much for watching, for sharing these videos, subscribing to the channel. Supporting your favorite content creators has never been more critical than it is today. So I greatly appreciate those of you looking at the links in the descriptions underneath my videos, maybe shopping a little merch, that kind of stuff really does help keep production rolling on this channel. You can catch a full list of all my current affiliates and partnerships on somegadgetguy.com, or you might consider joining the list of names scrolling on your screen from my Patreon, patreon.com slash somegadgetguy. Now this list is basically the coolest collection of tech pals on the web. So. I hope you'll check them out. Now, you know where you can find me around the rest of the internet, at some gadget guy on the Twitters and the Twitch, and the Facebooks and the Instagrams. And I will catch you all on the next review.